Hi, welcome to my latest video. This time I'm going to be making a wooden frame for a picture um, as a gift for a relative. And it's going to be made using some teak parquet flooring. Um, sounds quite simple, but it was quite daunting for me because I'd never made a frame before. So there were a few mistakes, a few pitfalls, a few things I could have done better, and I will be showing you all of them. So without much further ado, let's get going. So I have this lovely photograph of my baby when she was six months old at a family wedding with her dad. And there's a nice little gift for them, or for him. I decided I wanted to make a nice frame for it. So I have this horrid old frame. Absolutely no good to anybody. But the glass, with a bit of a clean up, I can use that for my frame. What I'm gonna to use to make the frame is this. This is solid teak. It's actually for parquet floors, but I'm gonna use it to make picture frames. Now, the camera does not do, do the colour justice because it's got such a lovely reddish colour and it looks quite yellow on my camera, but not to worry. Hopefully the end pictures will be good. So let's see how I do. I started by measuring the glass to see what size I should make the backing board. I used an offcut of three millimetre board, which in hindsight was probably thicker than I needed, but I had to use what I'd got due to lockdown. I traced around the glass and added an extra millimetre around each side to ensure a good fit, but as you'll see later, I should have added more. I cut it out on the table saw and then buffed off the edges to get rid of any rough bits. After a final check, I was happy with the fit. Perfect fit. Then I got out my crosscut jig that came with the table saw. This was a mistake. There's far too much wiggle room in the T-track, which can lead to inaccurate cuts. So I think I'm going to have to make one for a future project that's more accurate. I ploughed ahead and started cutting the mitres at one end of each piece. Get ready for mistake number three. I didn't check the height of the blade. And so as you can see here, it didn't cut all the way through the wood. I adjusted the blade height and carried on cutting the pieces until all four were done at one end. Next it was on to cutting the rebate. I'd never done one before, so I was really excited to have a go. It was then that I noticed mistake number four. It's so much harder to push the wood through the table saw with a mitered end. So I think it's best to cut the rebate first and the mitres after next time. And here's my first ever rebate. Quite proud of that. To do the second part of the rebate, I needed to stand each piece on its edge, and so I used double-sided tape to stick it to a sacrificial piece of wood. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the backing paper off the tape. I ran it through the table saw as slowly as possible, clearly terrified out of my wits, but hoping for the best, and I was paid out for having had a go. I mean, just look at how good it came out. I'm so pleased with that. Next, it was time to test fit and measure and mark the length of each piece. I decided to sneak up on a few of the cuts just for greater accuracy. On a flat surface, I did another test fit, and once I was happy, it was time for the glue up. I used clamps on each corner and some mini clamps on the inside corners and then left it to dry. After a couple of hours, I came back to inspect the joints. Not quite as tight as I would like, but... Could have been worse. Okay. 
joint looks okay. Bit of a gap there. Let's have a look. Hmm. Let's just see. Hmm. That looks a little bit off. Hmm. Yes, it does. So, a few little tidy ups to do. But not terrible. Mm -hmm. Then it was on to the job of sanding all the joints just to remove any glue squeeze out. I mixed some of the sawdust and wood glue to make my own filler for any gaps in the joints and then left that to dry for about an hour. In order to fix the wonky corner I showed you earlier, I chiselled out a small thin strip of wood from one end of the inside of the frame. This fixed the problem quite well and once I'd trimmed the tiny corner from the outside, you would never know that mistake number five had even happened. I sanded all the faces of the frame with an electric sander, first with 120 grit and then with 180 grit to achieve the smooth finish I wanted, followed by sanding the inside and outside edges by hand. The final finish was to apply a work top oil I got from Ikea a while ago with a clean rag on both sides. It goes on really nicely and after a few coats protects the wood very well. It really brings out the colour and the tiny flecks of gold in the wood. Now, due to lockdown, it wasn't possible for me to go out and get any of those little hooks that you put in the side of the frame that holds everything in. So I had to come up with a temporary solution. I used a narrow duct tape and it did the job well, all things considered. And that's the frame finished. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I certainly enjoyed making it. Um, even with the restrictions of lockdown and being unable to get certain pieces, I think it turned out really well. And the duct tape will come off and the little hooks will go in when I can go out and get some. So keep watching and you'll see his reaction when I gave it to him. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Take care. Jack, do you want your present? Go on, I'll have my present. never made a frame before so it's really nice thank you Louis. Okay. thank you <laughs> <laughs>